and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on this Gearbox Protocol version 3. Okay, now I did do a video a little while ago, uh, I don't know, 11 months ago on version 1, or oh, sorry, version 2. Uh, if you go to YouTube and you search Gearbox Caesar, you can find this Gearbox version 2. It kind of explains how Gearbox works, the version 2 system. Uh, you kind of should probably understand the basis, the underlying idea of Gearbox, so that you can kind of get some value out of this Gearbox version 3. But I will kind of go over things and kind of talk a little bit about how it works. But uh, if you really want to know deeper, I'd watch this video and you kind of really understand a lot more. But uh, Without further ado, let's let's kind of go through this, okay? So Gearbox version 3 is kind of like, what they've done is they've taken version 2 and they've added some pieces to it and they've went back and changed a few little pieces and kind of opened it up a little bit, okay? So you can kind of think of it that way. It's very similar to version 2 with like some more opportunities on the outside, okay? As well as a few little changes on the inside, okay? So let's kind of go through this article. Um, I don't have a flowchart for you. I'm just going to kind of, jump through this article and talk a little bit about each little section, okay? So the first thing they talk about here is uh, this is a credit account versus perpetuals or versus looping uh, on Aave and stuff like that. Looping is where you you, you take some an asset, you borrow another asset, you buy the, the first asset, and then you borrow more, and then you buy and borrow. So you just kind of like, so for example, use ETH to borrow USDC, take the USDC, buy ETH, just put it inside, and then borrow more USDC, buy more ETH, and then kind of put it inside or 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 hold it. And this kind of levers you up, right? So that's Aves. So then we all know about perps, per, perpetual DEXs like uh, Binance or even on-chain ones like GMX, DYDX, and stuff like that, where you can trade positions. And then there's Gearbox, which is uh, this new thing here which is kind of coming out soon, which is margin trading. Okay, now this has some big differences between the the, the, the GMX or the Binance's of the world, okay? So one of the big first differences is going to be that the amount of leverage available. If you go to GMX, you can do 50x leverage, right? Whereas in Gearbox, you're looking at, based on this image, 5x, 3x short, 5x long, so not not insanely amount, okay? Not insane leverage like like you, you can get. I've even seen like you know on chain GMX forks with like a thousand x leverage, okay? So anyhow, so that's the first difference, okay? Uh, one of the big differences that's very in interesting about the gearbox uh, versus GMX. If you go to GMX and you're a lender, so you go to GMX and you're like, hey, I wanna I wanna lend some USDC. And to these guys who want to do the perp trading, then you want those perp traders to lose. You want them to fail because if they win, they're going to be taking some of your money, right? So the winners take from the, the lenders and the losers pay the lenders, right? Whereas in GMX or sorry, in Gearbox, it's not like that. The winners don't care if you win or lose, and, but they probably want you to win. Because if you win, you will keep borrowing from them. Because when you borrow from the lenders, you pay them time-based APR. So the longer you borrow, the more you borrow, the more they get paid. So they want you to win so that you keep borrowing. So this is a huge difference, okay? This is, a, in my opinion, very different. And uh, it doesn't require as much, like... As much assets like if you think about it like if i want you to win I, I lend it to you and you do some leverage trading and you win or lose let's say you win then you pay me my my apr regardless of whether you win or lose right and so but whereas on gmx if you win i have to pay more so that what that requires gmx to do is they need to if they're going to support you know 50x leverage they need to have a lot more liquidity in case everyone wins and everyone needs to be paid right <clears throat> so they require a lot more extra leverage uh, liquidity now the last thing that that kind of sets gearbox aside from these other op options oh not so much the borrowing looping but definitely binance and gmx is that like gearbox is actually utilizing spot markets so it's actually if when you open a position a long let's say you do a long 5x on gmx and a long 5x on gearbox the one on gearbox actually takes your assets and buys those assets from uniswap or sushi swap or curve or whatever 
and it's actually affecting the price live right then and there. Whereas on GMX, it doesn't quite do that. Like it, there, there can be some ripple out effects uh, when someone, you know, wins and then takes some of those assets and sells them. They, they're actually on spot, but the actual trade is done not with live spot markets, right? So it doesn't have as much price impact. So you kind of kind of keep that in mind when you're doing these kinds of trading uh, on, on Gearbox that you actually might have effect on price in the real world, in the spot markets, okay? <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so here it just talks about the ability to uh, open a credit account with a wallet, uh, a mobile wallet, or account abstraction systems like uh, Osus not, not Safe or this other one here. Um, uh, going down, I'm gonna skip that, skip this. Uh, so here it talks a little bit about uh, having different risk profiles. So different kinds of users have different kinds of uh, risk appetites and this new Gearbox version three can kind of accommodate these different kinds of people. And I'll talk a lot more about that when we go down further. Okay, here it talks about Gearbox is like a, a commitment to a security and how they have, you know, version three has two audits and a bug bounty. And, you know, every time they spend money, they, they try to, they also spend money on, on security and risk management and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, so here's an overview of Gearbox version three and how the, the new features that it comes up with. I'm gonna go through these one by one uh, and kind of talk a little bit about them, okay? So the first one is collateral limits. Now, what is that? So if, if I'm a lender, I can lend these assets, right? But if I go here and I'm like, hey, I wanna be a borrower. I wanna borrow your assets. I come here, let's say I wanna borrow die and uh, I need to provide some collateral. As you can see, there's a lot more collateral options in here. So some of these collateral rules have higher risk than others. Like if I use DAI to borrow DAI, then that's very, very low risk, right? But if I'm using CRV, CVX, or maybe SNX or FXS, these are volatile assets that something could happen where these assets lose value very quickly, right? <clears throat> so. They, what they've done here is they, they've taken some of those higher risk assets and they've put protocol wide collateral limits on them. Okay. So they've limited the, the gearbox protocol can only have, let's say a million dollars worth of CRB as collateral. And that that's important. Now I'll talk a little bit more about this when we go down to the gauges at the bottom and you'll kind of understand a little bit more about collateral and how it, how, how it's kind of being utilized. Uh, these collateral limits are being worked into gearbox. Okay. Moving down uh, here's this, what is this risk specific lending pools alpha. Okay. So if you look at the blue, this is how gearbox version two works. Okay. So liquidity providers provide those liquidity assets. So, these guys here, you, you lend out some assets, you get these APRs, right? And then borrowers come along, they open up their credit accounts, right? So they're like, oh, I want to borrow your die. I'm going to use these assets and I'm going to take that die to these blue chip uh, whitelisted protocols, okay? So these, these protocols have been proven to be safe enough that Gearbox feels like, oh, if we need to liquidate this guy's position, we will be able to get our assets out of these protocols and liquidate his position. So this is the blue stuff, very low risk, uh, low, low return. But if a protocol wants to, if a lender wants to, they can opt in for more risk. So when they go to here and they're like, hey, earn, I want to lend my die, there might be some button down here that you would click and you would then be like, oh, my die can now be used for these higher risk things, okay? Now these higher risk things might be uh, specific uh, collaterals, right? Or maybe taking that, those, those borrowed assets and taking them to higher risk uh, yield farms or places where it's just, you know, higher risk than these blue chip ones. So obviously these, if, if the borrower is coming through the, this alpha pool, he's going to have to pay more APR or more uh, to, the, to the lender for, to, to borrow his assets. Okay, so that's kind of what it's talking about here. Here it talks about uh, the diesel tokens have become ERC204626. Now, what is a gear to uh, diesel token? If you go to earn, and like I want to lend some die, I want to lend 100 die, you can see I get D die as a, as a receipt token. So I lend die, they gave me back this D die token, and now this D die token is my ability to get my die back out. So as you can see, the D die tokens are worth more than 
die. And that's because there's interest built into them. So as the APR is getting built up, then I can I can, uh, you know, I, I I will like, let's say I put $100 in here, I get 97. I will always have 97 of these DDI tokens, but in the future, it, I might get, when I go to withdraw, I might get, you know, $120 or something like that, okay? Now, the reason why they made them ERC-2046-26 uh, is that they are, change the, the, the code functions, the names of the functions. So instead of like, for example, let's say I, I make a token and one of the functions I call is, is send. So I want to send this token to you, right? But most people use the function transfer. So by using a standard like function names, then these these uh, these protocols, other protocols can incorporate the diesel tokens into their protocol in a much easier fashion. They don't need to make custom code to, to integrate diesel tokens. So for example, maybe I, I might have a stable coin and I'm like, hey, I, I'm willing to let you use your diesel tokens as collateral to mint my stable coin because I know that the diesel tokens are just underneath, they are die or they are, you know, whatever those, whatever diesel token of WBTC or whatever. Okay. Moving on. Uh, partial withdrawals is just the ability to, instead of having to close down my entire uh, credit account position, I can pull out pieces of it. So if you think of it this way, let's say I put $100,000 uh, into a farm, I'm farming, right? And then I'm like, hey, you know, I, I made $20,000 already. Uh, I want to completely de-risk my $100,000. So I'm going to pull out my $100,000 and I'm going to leave the $20,000 there and hope for a, for a moon bag. Or the opposite, you know, I might put $100,000 in there and I, every month I'm going to take a little bit out so that I'm de-risking and stuff like that. So the partial withdrawals is uh, a way that you can kind of do this, okay? Uh, Gearbox intent agents. This is kind of a talk a little bit about the uh, ability to incorporate bots into your strategies or into your your use of Gearbox. Now, this is pretty important stuff. Um, this is not like giving your credit account or your private key to a bot, right? No, it's, it's very different than that. It's basically what it is, is there are certain functions inside the credit account that will allow you to delegate those functions to a bot. So a bot might be able to do one specific thing for you and you say, oh, I want this bot to be able to pay add collateral to my credit account. And that's all I can do. So if my health factor goes to a certain point, this collateral, this bot will kick in and it'll add some collateral to it. So this is kind of like what the, the, the idea of this is that it's like bots can kind of interact with your position in a very restricted controlled manner. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is where I was talking about collateral limits, quotas, gauges, collateral limits. So I told you already collateral limits is like a, a protocol wide limit on a collateral. So like I said, maybe the CRV has a limit of $1 million can be used as collateral or like this is a, a good way to look at it. Like CRV beyond 3x total value of CRV, you know, like the protocol slash pool is not exposed to CRV beyond 3x total value of CRV. So if if you put it'll still allow you to put it, but it's not going to use that as as a collateral. It, you can't you you can put as much CRV in there as you want, but it's not going to give you collateral value for for that. Now it talks a little bit here about quotas and quotas versus collateral limits, and the the limit is protocol wide, and the quota is like credit account specific. So if there's a million dollars of CRV allowed, then maybe your credit account has $10,000 and my credit account has $10,000 and dollar bills credit account has $10,000. So each of those credit accounts can maybe use a bit of that quota, right? Now, because of these, these assets are higher risk, then you have to pay more, right? So that's where the gauges come into play. And the gauges are voted on by gear stakers so you stake up your tokens your gear tokens and i, I can't remember the, the the time i think it's yeah four weeks so you you, you kind of lock your your gear tokens for four weeks and it's just for it's not a long time right so you kind of do that and then you can vote so there are two kinds of voters probably there are the lenders so the lenders if you go to here you go to earn and you go to here you can see uh, a, a vast majority of the uh, apr for 
for lending is paid in, in gear tokens. So you can farm gear tokens. And uh, if you're a lender, what you're going to do is you're going to be, hey, if they want to borrow my assets and they want to take them to risky things, they want to use risk, higher risk, I want them to pay more, right? And then the opposite is obviously true. If you're a lender or you're a borrower, a leverage user, and you have gear tokens, then you're going to like, no, I want it cheap as possible. So these two, these two parties, the both sides of this, this, uh, this system are, have gear tokens and they can kind of fight for an equilibrium, a, a common ground. That's like a compromise between both of them, where they're both happy that they're getting enough APR and, or it's cheap enough that they will use it and so forth. Okay. Uh, moving on, and, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that kind of covers this in, in a nutshell. It's a quick overview. Now, of course, you know, as always, you know, I would suggest you come, read this yourself, dig deeper, find out if this is interesting. I really like Gearbox Protocol. Um, it's not for everybody, and it's actually designed to not be for everybody. Like, if you want to open a credit account, you need to open a specific amount. I can't remember how much it is, but I know it's like, like 20000 or 50000 dollars like you, you got to be prepared to to open a, a big position and what this does is it requires you to hesitate right like you're not going to just go oh, click 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 and and open up a position like it is very easy to open a position like you can go here credit account you can go to these automated systems and one click douche and you, you're in it you know you just kind of provide the collateral and instantly into this position right <clears throat> And it's very easy to do, but because there's a there's there's a, a minimum, a substantial minimum, then people hesitate and they're like, hey, you know, I gotta make sure I gotta do this, make sure I know what's going on, make sure I believe in this, and I'm, you know, it's it's a when you're gonna drop like a couple hundred bucks, you just throw it and see what sticks, right? Whereas here, you know, you're it's it's a substantial amount of money that enough that you're going to hesitate and really dig deeper. Um, we talk, I, I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere on an AMM that these these uh, long positions and short positions, it's margin trading. It's also going to have a limit, but it's not going to be 50000 or anything. It's just like $1,000. So you can kind of open smaller positions in, in that way when this comes out. Okay, so I do like this I do like this protocol. I, I kind of know that they, they, they're they a little bit slower to expand and to open up their, their gates for anyone. And I kind of like that. It kind of, they take slow calculated informed decisions and expand in a slow uh, scaling manner okay so that's pretty much it for today i hope this has been useful and interesting and thank you so much for watching and goodbye